It has a population of about 10 million people, but Los Angeles is built on shaky ground. It lies close to the San Andreas Fault, and geoscientists here worry that the fault is primed to rupture. The US Geological Survey is constantly studying stresses on the fault and creating simulations of what the next big quake might look like. The San Andreas is known as a strike-slip fault, where the plates move horizontally. A magnitude 7.8 quake like this one wouldn't cause a tsunami, but the damage would be extensive. According to experts like UCLA's Jonathan Stewart, a serious earthquake in the next 30 years is inevitable. It's really ready to produce a big earthquake, and so it is something we're very worried about. So no, we can't say it's going to happen next week or next month, but the probabilities are high. The last big quake to rock California struck at Northridge near downtown Los Angeles in January 1994. The quake killed more than 60 people. Engineers say the death toll would have been much higher were it not for stringent local building codes developed by the state after years of seismic activity. Even so, says Professor Stewart, the city is extremely vulnerable. The San Andreas Fault is about um, 50 kilometers or more uh, from most of the city, so it's not that close. Uh, but for the tall buildings that we have, uh, they will experience very extreme shaking. Um, that earthquake can cut off our water supply uh, for uh, quite an extended period. Um, and uh, so the, the effects of it could, would be severe. There are similar concerns all the way up the coast to Seattle, Washington, where scientists have been sketching out cataclysmic earthquake scenarios for years. Civil engineering decisions are based largely on predictions about how severe an earthquake might be and what it might do to infrastructure like government buildings, roads and water supply. Seattle sits to the east of the Cascadia subduction zone, a plate boundary where tectonic movement takes place vertically. It is far more likely to produce a tsunami, and for scientists like Dr. Eddie Bernard, the Japanese experience is providing valuable lessons. The lesson learned may be if you, if you have a subduction zone off your coastline, and you think the potential for that, that subduction zone is a magnitude 9 earthquake, then probably the preparation would be for 40 meter run up in certain areas. The conclusions of scientists like Eddie Bernard and his colleague Vasily Titov, based on the Japanese data, will inevitably lead to difficult choices for city planners and politicians. Where to build and develop land, how high to build, how stringent the building codes, and how to create the best possible warning system are all questions that have to be addressed. The Cascadia subduction zone is, is really due for a big event and uh, what we saw in Japan is probably a good, a good example of what we can see uh, if, if 9.0 earthquake uh, happens here. American Diabetes Association. It's been 10 years since Washington state was shaken by its last significant earthquake a magnitude 6.8 that caused damage but no deaths in the state capital, Olympia. A much bigger quake is expected within the next 50 years, and for residents all along the west coast, last month's catastrophe in northern Japan is a sobering reminder of their own vulnerability. Rob Muir, Reuters.